Hey there, pilgrims. This is my second Camino Frances and my fifth Camino overall. And I wanna share with you what I packed in my backpack because the best Camino is the one where you only carry what you need. We walked the Camino Frances from St. Jean Pied-a-Port to Santiago de Compostela in September, 2023. We finished in the very beginning of October. So here's my essential list for the Camino Frances. I'm Lainey and this is Days We Spend. Let's start with the backpack. The bigger the bag, the more you're gonna pack. Therefore, limit yourself to a smaller bag. I have the 24 liter backpack from Usui. This is their Hiker Pro. You don't need this exact backpack, but you should carry a bag that's no more than 36 liters. The reason I really love this backpack is because the way it fits on my body. I'm only five foot one and I have a very short torso. It's like 14 inches. And most backpacks aren't made for the size of my torso. This one though is fully adjustable on the bag. So it completely fits my body. It is a frameless ultralight backpack, which means I can roll it up. It's not quite as minimalist as some other brands because it does have a little bit of padding and I really love the strapping system. It's made for runners so you can go really fast without the backpack jiggling around, but also I think it minimizes the creaking sound that you get from some other backpacks. Whatever bag you choose, it's very personal to you and it is important to try things on or buy it online with a return policy. Usui sent me this bag to test and I'm only including it because I love it. I added a chest pocket here, which is from Usui. You can do this on any other backpack as well so that I could keep my cell phone handy at all times, or you could use it for snacks. I think a good backpack, it's important to have a waist belt because it's gonna take the weight off of your shoulders. In fact, with this strapping system, I don't even feel the weight on my shoulders. I only feel it on my hips and a little bit in the front of my body. If your bag is not waterproof, you need to have a rain cover. This bag is 100% waterproof. This gray dry bag liner means that everything inside my bag is always dry, no matter what. This bag is a roll top, which initially I thought would be really annoying, but I actually ended up liking it because it means that the volume can change as you go, especially on days where you're carrying a lot of snacks. So this bag has an outside pocket specifically for carrying a water bladder. Now the water system you use is going to be incredibly personal to what you prefer. This bag has pockets big enough for bottles on the side and I can reach them. I have a three liter water bladder. This is also from Usui and it comes with a insulated sleeve. And I love this insulated sleeve because on heat wave days, my water actually stayed cold all the time. And it was amazing. You do not need three liters of water on the Camino Frances. There are water fountains in almost every town you pass through. I do recommend having the capacity for at least one and a half liters of water. And if it's going to be a hot or a heat wave or you're in summer, definitely two liters of water. I think the biggest question when packing for the Camino is what to wear and what clothes to pack in your bag. The answer for me is you have one pair of clothes you hike in and one pair of clothes for town. So my hiking clothes, I'm wearing a Ridge Merino sun hoodie. This is Merino wool, which is my favorite fabric of all time because Merino wool resists odors and it dries quickly. It's sustainable depending on the company you're purchasing from. And it's just a really soft fabric to wear. So on the Camino de Santiago, there's a section called the Meseta where there's just very little shade. So I really like wearing a sun hoodie because I didn't have to put sunscreen on my ears and the back of my neck. I was just protected from the sun with this hood. It has thumb holes, which means that my hands didn't get as much sun exposure. I had a really cool tan line <laughs> by the end of the trip, right in the middle of my hand. I actually wasn't too hot in this. The only times I felt like this was too much was there was a heat wave that we had and it was only a few days. Other than that, I'm really, really glad I had long sleeves. I didn't have to pack as much sunscreen. I wasn't worried about as much UV exposure. I'm a huge convert to hiking in a long sleeve shirt, whether you get a more techie version that's buttoned up or you go with a sun hoodie or just a plain long sleeve shirt. That's my new thing all the time, except maybe in August. <laughs> this shirt overall performed really, really well. You're looking at it in its grossest state possible. It's clean, 
but I did wear it for 56 days in a row on trail because we actually started hiking in Le Puy en Valais in France. So by the time we got to the Camino Francais, I'd already worn this shirt for 28 days straight. It did wear out quite a bit in the parts that I was rubbing. You can see the underarms kind of just disappeared and my back is just rubbed through. I did email the company and they stand by their products and they have amazing customer service and they replaced my sun hoodie for me because this type of wear and tear is not normal. So I really recommend getting a sun hoodie. Just know that it'll probably wear out if you wear it every day on in the entire Camino. I am wearing shorts that are from Rab. R-A-B, I actually don't know how to pronounce the name of this brand. My favorite thing about the shorts is that they have an elastic waistband and a drawstring, which meant as I sweated and they got wet, I could tighten the drawstring and they didn't fall off my body. But the waistband is very comfortable to wear under the waist belt of a backpack. I really love elastic waistbands because it's just really quick to get dressed and undressed. These shorts also dried really, really quickly when I had to wash them or when I was sweating through them. All of my underwear is from Branwyn Merino. I'm wearing a black bralette. I really prefer just minimal padding for hiking because my backpack is kind of like in my upper body, like supporting everything else also. I have my merino wool bralette from Branwyn and the merino wool underwear from Branwyn. And both of my underwear and bra look like I just bought them. They held up so well. And again, I wore them every day or in the case of the underwear, every other day. In terms of packing, I always bring a second pair of the same underwear. At the end of the day, I take off my dirty ones and I put, after I shower, I put on the clean ones. Dirty ones get washed, they dry overnight. If they didn't dry overnight, I hang them on my bag to dry during the day. But essentially I change my underwear to wear for 24 hours in the afternoon or evening once I've gotten to the albergue. And I like the ones with more coverage because I sleep in these at night in the albergue. I'm personally comfortable enough to walk to the bathroom at night wearing these because they're honestly larger than my swimsuit bottom. So I don't have to pack any pajamas because I'm wearing these underwear as pajamas. This is my second bralette from Branwyn Merino. And again, this is what I wore in the evening when we got into town. And if I needed to, I could hike in this. So I packed two pairs of socks, one that I'm wearing and one that was in my bag or always drying because thick hiking socks take a long time to dry, even though they're merino wool. The ones that are my favorite are from Darn tough merino and they have just lasted through many caminos my darn tufts i've had since 2019 and they are still going strong and amazing these ones are from farm to feet i got them at the same time as the darn tough love these socks they're so comfortable but they did have a hole which meant i had to buy a new pair of socks on the way but they're definitely not as nice as my other socks. I don't find them as comfortable and they dry a little slower. I always like hiking with a pair of sock liners. I find that it reduces the amount of blisters that I get. And I actually brought two pairs of liners. I like the silk liners from REI best, the ones I'm wearing right now. They did fall apart by the end, but I've also used them for four years. These ones are a synthetic one from REI. They did not fall apart, but also I just think my feet get a little more hot in these ones. So I always every day wore my sock liners and then would wash them at the end of the day and then swap them out. So you have one clean and you have one you're wearing. I have one t-shirt. That is it. This is a shirt from Ridge Merino. Same brand as the shirt I'm wearing now, this purple one. This is for town. This is for sleeping. This is for everything else is held up amazingly. It's just a really good fabric. I have these Patagonia Happy Hike Studio pants and I love these pants so much. They're so comfortable. I have a whole video on these separately if you wanna know more about these pants. Because we hiked in September, I chose to have a pair of pants as the second bottoms in my backpack. I do think though they're a little heavy. <laughs> I wish I could find something a little lighter weight. The second iteration of these Happy Hike Studio Pants, I think are much heavier because they have more zippers than the first one. See, how much does this weigh? So the size small weighs 286 grams, which sounds pretty light, but meh. Because compare that to my sweater, which is 176 grams. So my pants are double the weight of my sweater. This sweater is just a fleece from Columbia. You either need a fleece or a lightweight puffy jacket, just one 
layer. This is for any time you're walking on the Camino. I think you're going to want to layer whether it's spring, summer, or fall. Winter, totally different packing list. I've got that above. I chose a fleece this time because it's easier to wash and keep clean than a puffy jacket. A rain jacket is a must. I think investing in a very good quality rain jacket is 100% worth it. This one is the Torrent Shell Patagonia jacket and it has the pit zip, so like zippers on the underarm, because when you're hiking uphill, you're going to get sweaty anyways, and you're gonna want that ventilation. A very good rain jacket is going to last a long time. A sun hat. This one is from Sunday Afternoons, and I brought a baseball cap style to wear with the hood. If I wasn't wearing a hooded shirt, I would bring a big brimmed hat that covered the back of my head and my neck, but because I knew I had a hood, I chose my baseball cap this time. A buff, the most multi-use piece of clothing you'll have because it's a sweater, it's a sweat rag, it wipes your tears from your eyes when you're in the Obradoiro looking at the cathedral and you can't believe you made it and you're teary, or you know, you just got sunscreen in your eye. <laughs> but when it's hot, you dip it in water, cools you down. When it's cold, you can pull it over your face, keep your face warm, but make sure you pack a buff. You want two pairs of shoes for the entire Camino, and one is your hiking shoes, and the other is your town and shower shoes. So my hiking shoes are these really beat up Ultra Lone Peak. These are the sixes. These shoes have been on two Caminos. I wore them on the Primitivo, and then I also wore them from La Puy all the way to Santiago. What I love about them is the wide toe box, and I really love that they're flat because I wear zero drop shoes in my daily life. I'm a barefoot shoe person, but if you are not a barefoot shoe person, I do not recommend going to a zero drop shoe right away because you will probably get Achilles tendonitis. So only if you're comfortable with a zero drop do I recommend the Ultras. Otherwise, there's some other brands that a lot of people wear, Topo, and you'll also see a lot of Hakas. You don't need to get this exact shoe, but I do recommend a trail runner. And the reason is you're walking a lot of times on concrete and roads and gravel pathways. You're almost never on remote trails. There's only a couple days where it really feels like really rocky. And if your bag is light, you do not need heavy ankle support. The average person doesn't need heavy ankle support. Again, you do you. Shoes are very, very personal. So if you know you love a boot, go with a boot. I personally went with a boot my first Camino Frances and I hated them. By the first three days, my Gore-Tex boots got soaked through because we had pouring rain in the Pyrenees and they never dried for like a week. And I had crazy blisters because my shoes were wet. A shoe that is not waterproof will dry overnight when it gets wet. So you will never have multiple days of wet feet. I bought these on sale because they're last year's model. And I always just recommend know which size you need. You can measure your foot and they have size charts online and then find them when they go on sale. I have a pair of sandals that I keep in a little flimsy plastic bag because they're gross and I don't want them to touch my other items in my bag. These are the Z Trail Zero Shoe Sandals. I usually bring a pair of Crocs on my Caminos because Crocs are just great shower shoes, but this time I actually chose to go with a pair of sandals that I liked walking around town in more. I was really happy that I had these. They actually dried pretty quickly out of the shower and the little bit of cushioning was really nice and they do not take up much space in my bag and they're not that heavy for how much function they bring. For me, a sandal is key is that you can put your foot inside with a sock on because in the evening if it's chilly you're gonna wear socks and sandals i also have an entire review on these sandals that you can check out in the link above so let's go through my toiletries what do you need to be healthy and happy and clean on trail pretty much all my toiletries fit in this tiny bag you can choose to use a Ziploc bag. I personally like something that I can hang because you're often in a bathroom where there's only some hooks or maybe just a stall door for the shower and there's nowhere to put any of your things. So when you're in the shower, it's nice to have something that you can hook onto the door. So I've put a little carabiner on my bag. This bag just came from Muji. It's like a little pencil case. I also have a bar of soap that I keep in this Matador soap case. 
I think this oak case is totally worth it. The soap dries when this is closed and it doesn't get all gross everywhere. You can just use a Ziploc bag, which I did for years, but I'm actually really glad that I upgraded to using this case. Now the soap inside is a bar of Dr. Bronner's soap and I use it for everything. I use it to wash my face, to wash my hair, I use it to wash my body and to wash my clothes. When you're doing the Camino Francais, you only need about a half a bar, maybe a little less. So take that full bar and cut it in half. So what's in the rest of my toiletry bag? A tiny travel toothbrush, toothpaste tablet, moisturizer, a packable comb. If you need a hairbrush, bring a mini version. I use natural deodorant and I just put some of it into this little tin. I have a little bag of Q-tips because I hate wet ears some lavender oil because it's pleasant at night to smell lavender oil and not other smelly pilgrims. I have two chapsticks. One is my nighttime chapstick and the other one is a daytime one with sunscreen, which I actually keep on the outside of my bag for easy use. I'm a mouth grinder. I have a night guard. <laughs> some floss picks, a couple extra elastic hair ties, and something I picked up on the way, which was Arnica gel. This helped prevent my tendonitis injuries from actually becoming a problem. A couple other toiletries that aren't inside my bag that are actually handy at all times is my sunscreen. I have a little thing of just regular sunscreen that I can use for my legs. And my husband and I actually would buy like a bigger bottle when we ran out of this and just refill the tiny bottle. So I just kept using the small bottle. Again, you always want to decant everything you use into a small container. And then I have my two favorite zinc sunscreens. One is a tinted one and one is just a white one. These are from All Good. But I use the tinted one for my face and the white one for my hands and my neck. Places I sweat a lot and I wanted the sunscreen to last longer. This is a case of soap flakes. Oh, look, I only have one left. When your hands are dry, you pull out the flake from the case and you wash your hands because not all of the albergues have soap and not all bars have soap. I would always have this in my waist pack or like the outside pocket of my backpack so it was handy and easy to grab the soap when you need it. So I carry what's called a Kula cloth and this is an alternative to toilet paper. It clips onto the outside of your backpack and it's antimicrobial. And then at the end of the day, you bring it inside and you wash it and it dries. Every hiker who uses toilet paper when they pee should have this because it prevents trash on the side of the trail. The Camino Frances is very crowded. There will be some toilet paper on trail. Please don't contribute to that problem. Ta-da! This is a two liter REI waist bag. I like this one a lot because it's very flat to my body. Most of the times I'm actually hiking with it on my waist, but I actually found if it was really hot, I just preferred to put it in the side pocket of my bag or like in my backpack and then take this out when I got to a stop or a town because all my valuables were in this bag, which meant it was on me, on my person at all times. So inside the valuables, this is a chums wallet that has two zippers, which means it has space for coins because you're in Europe, you're going to use a lot of coins to pay for things. Inside the waste pack is also my passport inside a plastic bag to protect it from moisture. You'll also have a plastic bag with your pilgrim passport. I also kept my cell phone in my pocket of my backpack or in my waste bag and it's an iPhone 13. But it's filming right now. You'll want a phone with a working SIM card. There is a lot of Wi-Fi in Spain everywhere, so you don't need a working SIM card, but it's just really useful. A lot of places use WhatsApp and you can contact albergues and make bookings for places to stay with WhatsApp. You can use guidebook apps online as well. So let's go through some more of the accessories that I have. Hiking poles. I love hiking poles. You can buy a pair when you get here in St. Jean Pied-a-Port or in Pamplona. I have these ones from Trail Buddy. I actually saw quite a few people using these ones on trail. I love them. I've had these on three Caminos and they finally actually just kind of broke on the bottom. I wore them out. I got to figure out how to fix these tips somehow. When you're hiking on concrete though, you need rubber tips for your hiking poles because that will actually reduce the noise, but also the grip is better. So make sure you have a pair of these tips. I love these ones from Decathlon. They last the longest and wear through the slowest of any hiking pole tip I've ever had the absolute best. 
You might not think you like hiking poles, but I guarantee you there's some long flat stretches. There's some very steep hills day in and day out of hiking over and over and over again. It is really nice to transfer some of the weight from your legs to your arms. I'll never hike a Camino without my poles. A travel towel. This is the Sea to Summit Airlight Towel and it is big enough to wrap around my body. I love this thing because it is so small, packs up tiny and dries really quickly. Look at this, it's huge. A charger for your phone or any electronics. This one is from Anker and it is a 30 watt fast charger. I loved having a fast charger because it meant that my phone was done very quickly. And oftentimes you're sharing an outlet with many different people in the same albergue. And it's really polite to only charge your phone for a short period of time. Sunglasses. I really like these sunglasses from News because they're really flat pack and tiny. They fit my face so well because I'm so small and they're really lightweight. I did have some issues with these glasses though because they delaminated, which was a manufacturing error. And I've had many pairs of these before, so I was actually really sad that these ones didn't work. So I ended up having to buy a pair of sunglasses partway through our trip. And I just got these really cheap ones from Decathlon, but they worked great because I didn't care if they got banged up. I just kept them like in a little pouch on the side of my bag. These are laundry soap sheets. Sometimes you get the opportunity to do laundry in a washing machine. So I always recommend bringing just like a handful of these. If you're walking for 30 days, you probably will only need to use three or four. Oftentimes you'll have soap you can use or pay to have someone do your laundry. These were really helpful when we were staying in an Airbnb type place, which we did in Burgos and we did in Leon. My husband and I shared a pocket knife, which is great for cutting bread or cheese. You don't need this, but it is nice to have if you plan to have a lot of picnic lunches. Picnic lunches saves you a lot of money from eating in town all of the time. If you want to be a pilgrim with lots of leisure time and lovely Spanish lunches, though, you will not need this. A journal and a pen in a plastic bag. You'll also get a lot of papers from the St. Jean Port Pilgrim Office, and that includes like a vague map of the route telling you the altitudes. They'll also give you an entire list of all of the places to stay with phone numbers to call. It's nice to have a bag to put the papers in and kind of keep it all together with your journal. Hand sanitizer, clipped to the outside of my backpack for ease of use. A carabiner clipped to the outside of my backpack so I can hang my hat on it. I also always kept a hair tie on there. Your house keys, just bring the most minimal set you can. A reusable tote bag. Some headphones, these are totally optional. If you like to listen to music on the trail, please bring headphones, some extra Ziploc bags, because you never know when you have extra snacks or just things you need to keep dry. A snack bag. I brought this one because it's very, very lightweight and it's foil lined and a little insulated. It's a fork, spoon, knife, noon thing because I like to eat yogurt and you can stir drinks. It's surprising how often I use this. The little tripod because we film things if you are not a video person, you don't need this weight. So what did I do for sleeping? I've mentioned my pajamas, which is a t-shirt and my underwear. I always slept in this cocoon sleep sack. You do not need a sleeping bag on the Camino if you are willing to use the blankets provided. Now the blankets are not always clean. They're not always nice. They are sometimes not there, but if you're not particular, you can just use a sleep sack. The sleep sack is just so you have something between you and what's provided. You have to bring something unless you're only staying in private rooms and in the hotels and pensions. If you're planning to stay in any albergues, you need to have a sleep sack at the very least. Or you can bring a light sleeping bag, especially if you're going in a colder part of the season. And you're gonna need an eye mask, so get a good one that blocks out light and is comfortable to wear and has a little pocket which has earplugs in it. I personally don't need earplugs, but they're there in case like I do need them, but I've never needed them because I'm very hard of hearing and I wear hearing aids. So I actually have a lot of hearing aid accessories that you probably don't have, but if you do need something like that, I've got my dehumidifier case and some extra batteries and accessories that I needed. But I typically keep my hearing aid items and my sleep mask all in one little packing cube. It's the only packing cube I use. I could also just use a Ziploc bag, but it's something to just keep these smaller items separate and easy to find. First aid kit. Almost everything fits in this tiny little case. You could also just use a Ziploc bag. Inside that bag is 
ibuprofen. You can also buy some more along the way in the pharmacies. A little container with some allergy medicine. If you know you have seasonal allergies, maybe bring a few things. Melatonin to help me go to sleep at night in the albergues. Some band-aids some antibiotic ointment, anti-diarrheal medicine, Tums, antacid, and I had some Pepto-Bismol that I used because I had a day where I had really bad stomach problems. If you know you have a sensitive stomach, I do bring some things that are very useful. Some safety pins, nail clippers. I brought a little pair of scissors so that I could cut this elastic sports tape that I had, so KT tape, because I use that for my knees or when I had some tendon problems. The scissors are also also useful for cutting lamb's wool, which is what I use to prevent blisters. So here's a bag of some really nice new lamb's wool. And it just kind of comes as this like big chunk and you just cut what you need and kind of put it on your feet. And it provides a nice little barrier between your body and whatever is causing friction. The natural oils, the lanolin and the wool provides a really nice slippery surface. You might be a person who likes using moleskin. You might be someone who likes using compede, which are these blister patches you can buy here in Spain. I don't like adhesive things. I'm kind of allergic to them. So I prefer using lamb's wool. This is all that I have left. Sarah, thank you for sending this to us. It's impossible to find it in Spain. So if you want lamb's wool, you got to get it in the US or somewhere else. Some muscle rub balm. Really nice to give yourself a self massage for your calves and feet at the end of the day. It's a KF94 mask. You need this one or the KN95. I have two knee braces because I know I have knee problems. I made a sign because I'm hard of hearing and I really can't hear what's happening behind me. And there's a lot of bicyclists on trail and just hikers who sometimes want to pass you. So me as a hard of hearing person, I actually found people very friendly since I made this sign. So that is everything I brought in my backpack. When you're packing, you can make two considerations. Is it something that I use every day or is it for emergencies first aid? The only other thing is, is it a luxury item? And that luxury item, is it worth the weight to carry? Or is it worth the cost to ship it to Santiago if I don't want to carry it? Now, I had a couple things in my bag because it was a much longer trip that I actually got rid of and I shipped to Santiago. I'm gonna share them with you now because if you're going in summer or August and it's really hot, you might actually want these items. A swimsuit. I actually wore this when I did all of my laundry. I just put my swimsuit on. There's a lot of albergues that have pools and there was only one time, I kind of wish I had my swimsuit when we were on the Camino Frances after I'd shipped this, but you can always wear your underwear. A sundress. I felt really cool and cute wearing this around France when we were walking that section of our Camino. I think it's a little heavy though. And because I knew the weather was cooling down in September, I actually shipped it ahead from Pamplona and I didn't use it. And you know what? I didn't need it. You don't need that third pair of clothes. It's a luxury item. So it was no longer worth its weight to carry. I have my wool buff, which is my second buff. And I do wish I had this at the very end of the trip, but I made do. I was cold for a few days, but I had a hood and a jacket. I had enough layers, but it is nice to have a couple extra layers if you're going a little later in September. A wool buff, a pair of gloves. Those are the types of things that are really going to help make your packing list stretch a little further. So the weight of my bag with no water and no food is 5.15 kilograms, which is 10.9 pounds. So remember, only bring what you need because you're gonna be carrying all that weight every day. The less things that you have, the happier you're gonna be as a pilgrim because you won't have to care for all that stuff. You don't have to find it in the albergue. You don't have to pack it every day. You're not carrying it. And it's just really amazing what you can experience when you just lighten that load, your physical burden, and maybe it'll help you lighten your mental burden as you walk your first Camino Frances. I'm Lainey, and I hope you have a buen Camino, pilgrims. <laughs> and this is Days We Spent. Pilgrim! My name is Painty Face! And the Camino is...